praise the Lord once again and uh, a good day to everyone wherever you are tuned in and uh, wherever you are listening. The Lord is good always and uh, we give him praise and thanks for the things that uh, he is doing for us. Welcome to presentation number nine and uh, in this presentation we are going to deal with uh, the trumpet sound we want to see that the trumpets in the sanctuary what were their main purpose and what can we learn from it let us give thanks to the lord our heavenly father praise honor and glory be unto thy name Lord, you have made it uh, so to be in this hour that uh, we may receive your blessings through your word. And Father, we want to listen to everything that heavens want to speak to us. So give us a good listening ear. And uh, as uh, I am going to be used as a vessel, sanctify me and uh, Lord, may my lips only speak that which as Jesus Christ would want to be spoken at this hour. In his name I pray. Amen. And so uh, I believe that uh, this is uh, an incredible journey that uh, we are uh, going through or we are venturing in, a journey to learn about the will of God, to learn about the sanctuary, to learn about the ways of God. And uh, there is nothing as good as learning about God because uh, there are many things we can learn, but um, they will never bring satisfaction to our lives. But uh, when we learn about God, all the satisfaction we need, all the emptiness that we experience shall be taken away when uh, we hold Jesus Christ as the anchor of our lives and let him lead in all the days of our lives. And so brothers and sisters, welcome one, once again to our nightly presentation and uh, I'm looking at uh, the feast of the tab. I'm looking at the tabernacles, and I'm in the trumpet sound. And I hope that uh, we shall be blessed together. And so let us uh, dive in in the feast of the trumpets. The feast of the trumpets. Uh, it's found in Leviticus chapter twenty-three, verses twenty-four. And uh, this is what um, the Bible records. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. And so the trumpet is um, the first of the autumn feast. The a reason of having the trumpets was to uh, alert the people about the day of the final judgment. That is what we call the Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. And uh, the trumpet was to call to attention the necessity of self-examination. Trumpets draws the minds to the final harvest and festivities on some you find that uh, the trumpet sound was something which was important because it um, left the people with uh, a decision to make according to the information they had received when the trumpet was blown. If it was to gather around the sanctuary, then they were not spared if they heard the trumpet and they did not take that opportunity to assemble there. If it was a trumpet to go to the war, then no one had an excuse of not preparing because the trumpet had sounded. And we are told that uh, let the trumpet sound with a certain note. Many of the times we are hearing trumpet sound, but they are sounding with a certain note. You can't really know and determine if what you are hearing is what exactly the Lord is speaking. And so as you hear the trumpet, even as I'm sounding one that we are in the day of atonement and we need to be restored to God, double check what I'm speaking with your Bible. 
to make sure that the things you are hearing, they are so, because many people hear, but they do not hear as it should be heard, or rather people speak and they speak that which should, it's not there. And so there it needs to be a trumpet uh, call in the day that you are living in to sound an alarm in Israel that the people of God may know the times that they are living in. We are told in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, and if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Ezekiel 3 verse 7, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So you find that uh, while uh, Israel generally was asleep, there were those who were awake and alert to give a warning of what is to come. We can therefore see how the trumpets are, associ are associated with the watches and uh, watchmen watch in the night during the period of the watches and blow uh, the trumpet to warn. And so at a time such as this, when uh, we are living in perilous time, what we need are faithful men and women who cannot be bought or sold, but will be sincere and true to their duty as the needle is to the poor, calling sin by its rightful name, in humbleness and in humility, guiding the children of God in such a time as this, being the mouthpiece of God to speak the oracles of heaven to the people. In uh, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, we are told, and of the children of Issachar who understood the times and what ought to be done. We need such a people as the children of Issachar who can be able to understand what is the time and what is to be done and sound an alarm in Israel so that uh, the people may be prepared for what is coming to happen upon the face of the earth. Otherwise, we are told that uh, those who have assumed the work of the watchmen, yet they will not take care of the sheep, but will feed themselves in the green grass and drive the flock to the mountains where there are beasts and wolves, the Lord shall come and rebuke such a shepherd. And so we ask, what kind of a shepherd are you? Are you a shepherd? Am I a shepherd who is making sure that uh, the flock is fed meat in due season? Or we are of them which are of the fables, and we would like to dance to the tune of many rather than hear what the Lord speaketh and tell it to Israel. God gives humble warning to his people and to the world before any calamity comes. You can take an example of the flood. You can take an example of Sodom, destruction of Babylon, Egypt, Nineveh, Jerusalem. He has made us free moral agents and therefore cannot interfere with our choices. Yet he does everything to alert us to danger and lead in the righteousness. As a loving parent warns his child, so is God to his children. And uh, it is not the will of the parent that a child may be lost in any way. No one has ever brought a child in this world who will wish the child to be lost. But sometimes you have children and there is information that you have to pass to them, a warning call 
but the children just decides to be wayward and go their way. You don't give up on them, but you be faithful parent and continue warning them until time still lasts. And we have a, a, a time when the child may be removed or the parent be removed, and then the voice of conscience is silenced so that uh, no more reproofs will be heard and no more admonitions will be heard. But as long as God still gives us the strength, our work is to be faithful. Our work is to give Israel a warning and purifying ourselves lest we give that warning and then we be found wanting in the balance of the sanctuary. Our work is not just to warn others. In fact, we cannot warn others on the very things that we are not prepared of. If we will give warnings to others, then we ourselves must be prepared for the calamity that is about. This is what the Feast of the Trumpet is all about as we look into it. Uh, in Numbers chapter 10, in Numbers chapter 10, verses 9, and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Now, brothers and sisters, we have an enemy before us, and that is the arch deceiver, Satan himself working through various institutions, various churches, various professed Christians, and the wicked men and principalities in heavenly places. Our work is to read the word of God, know what is there, and build a bulwark of scriptures around us and allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in our lives so that when we are transformed and converted, then we can be able to reach unto our brothers. Remember what um, Christ tells uh, Peter. He gives the, him an alarm warning that uh, Peter, Satan has prayed to uh, uh, tempt thee, but I have prayed for you, and after you are converted, uh, lead your brethren. And so, first of all, before we lead out, before we take any mandate of uh, sounding a trumpet, we must make sure that we are leaving the messages that we are giving. Again, this is... Uh, what um, we read um, in Numbers chapter 10, verses 5, when you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. And so in every step of advance in Christian life, a trumpet has to be sounded that we are getting to this stage of the war. We should never remain ignorant of uh, every advance in step that we have. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, we are told, let us hear the conclusion of the matter, or the whole matter, fear God and, give, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ten days were fully committed, dedicated, consecration before coming event. Pentecost is an example. You, you, you see, when you look at uh, the day of atonement, when you look at the day of atonement, the trumpets were blown prior to the day itself. The trumpets were blown prior to the day itself. In fact, the trumpets were blown 10 days to the, to the day of atonement. We cannot, brethren and sisters, wait until a calamity happens that is when we start telling the populace that uh, you know this was in the Bible, you know this was written here and here. We have to be diligent, diligent searchers of the truth 
so that we may be ahead of the events that have been foretold in the prophecy and be able to sound an alarm. So what will be the profit of sounding an alarm when an event is already happening or has happened? We must learn to sound the trumpet before the events happen. Right now we are approaching the Sunday law issue. And uh, the thing is being done underhandedly, and yet the watchmen on Zion's wall, most of them are asleep, and they will awaken when the thing, in fact, is just happened, and when it is too late to prepare. You look at uh, what is happening around the world, and uh, the issues of uh, mandatory. Uh, uh, healthcare services, you look at the cashless economy that is, they want to control how you spend, they know how much you spend and what you are spending on. And uh, you look at um, the green uh, 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 Sabbath movement and you understand that uh, everything is being put in place to make sure that the majority of the people are uh, bound into these things and they cannot come out. And so these are the very things that the trumpet should be sounding with a certain note so that people may understand that we are reaching at a place where the deadly wound is being healed. And soon and very soon, no one knows how soon this world will be plunged in darkness that has never been too late for many people who are waiting for their pastors, who are waiting for their elders, who are waiting for the laymen to say something. Everyone of us should be searching so that they may be watchmen on Zion's walls to be prepared in time. I have never seen a person who just entrusts everything with the housekeeper or the watchman and he or herself never takes um, uh, the pain of knowing what is surrounding the house, if there are any places where we have holes that the enemy can come in, are the alarms working, are the lights working, and everything is in place. Just a person decides to be ignorant. Uh, because I have employed a watchman, then I need not to worry about these things. The watchman has to do everything. If you are such a person, know that you are in trouble. We need everyone, whether you are in the house as the person who has employed the watchman or you are the watchman, everyone has to be uh, 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 um, with the knowledge of what is happening. And uh, you find that uh, the work of many people among us is take the tithe to the elder, take the tithe to the pastor, take your offerings to the church and let them do the work that they can do with it whether it be for arranging for evangelism, whether it be for uh, uh, um, seeing to it that the poor are fed, whether it be that uh, others who are going to the country living are helped out and medical missionaries going on. We don't do work as Christians in Moso Seventh-day Adventists by proxy. God tells us that we must be involved fully in what is happening. Where your money is, also put your head there. Don't just take your money and you are not putting your head there to know how things are running. And so a trumpet must be blown in Zion. A trumpet must be blown in Zion. In Joel chapter 2, verses 1, we are told, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Somebody has to give a warning. Therefore, somebody has to be awake to know what is about to happen. Somebody warned the 10 virgins uh, that the bridegroom is coming. And we had that procession that uh, the wise virgins had to join. And so let us not even wait to be part of the wise virgins. We have to be part of the procession that will warn the 10 virgins. 
Matthew chapter 25, verses 1, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took uh, their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five foolish. And so uh, all the Christian world is represented in this parable. The bride constitutes the church that is waiting Uh, the bride constitutes the church that is waiting for the second appearing of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it is interesting to note that um, the state of Laodicea is the state of the foolish virgins. So the foolish virgins are in the Laodicean state. I'll pause over that. If God willing, we shall be able to talk about that in uh, details. We shall be able to talk about in details. And so all Christian world is represented in this parable. The bride constitutes the church that is waiting for the second appearing of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with this uh, universal application, generally the church is all the Christian world, including all Christian denominational Protestants and organizations. Specific to organization, generally the church are those who are depositaries of the uh, uh, oracles of God. And they have the... They have the mandate to, um, as they have uh, taken the position of being the light bearers in the dark world, they have the duty of making sure that uh, no one is found in darkness while uh, the church really professes to be the light of the world. And so Matthew 25 continued on, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Generally, all were asleep. Specifically, all were not asleep. The watchmen were awake. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And in Matthew chapter 25, verse 6, and at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now, interestingly, it is an event that uh, wakes up the sleeping virgins. When you go back to the 1800s during the midnight uh, cry, it was the event of 1833 that uh, that is the, the showers of uh, the stars that um, awoke those who were sleeping. And then we had the fulfillment of uh, the prophecy in 1840 about um, the, the fall of uh, the Ottoman Empire. These are the events that were hinged on the midnight cry. And uh, when the faithful watchmen saw these events, they uh, uh, started announcing the hour of judgment is come. Christ is coming to claim the sanctuary. And so also an event will be able to take us through because the midnight cry has to be repeated and it swells into the loud cry. And so we are looking at the events which were prophesied in the scriptures, looking at the events that were prophesied in the scriptures. And uh, these events that uh, ushers in the close of probation, we have um, the image of the beast formation. That is when uh, the, there is a push for the churches to unite with the state. And uh, then we have the mark of the beast. That is the Sunday sacredness when it is um, uh, instituted. And then we have um, the great, uh, the, the, the little time of trouble morphing into the great time of trouble. And so you find that there are events that are lined up before the close of probation and our eyes need to be open as never before to these events so that we may be able to sound the trumpet with a certain sound. And so um, the watchmen need to be awake to the events of the world and not wait until it is too late when they will sound the trumpets uh, when it is too late. In the book of uh, Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, we are looking at the issue of the trumpets. 
in the feasts of the fall. Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offering that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord, your God. And uh, Psalms 81 verse 3, blow up the, the trumpet in the new moon in the time of a, a time appointed on our solemn feast. So there is an injunction that uh, the trumpet must be blown at an, a time appointed, at a solemn feast day. And we understand that um, we are in a solemn feast, that is the day of atonement, and trumpet after trumpet should be sounding to warn the people to get ready for the high priest leaving even the most holy place. In fact, if you go to the book of Leviticus, that should be Numbers 28, we are told that um, the high priest had a bell of pomegranate on the hem of his garment. When he went in, the people were able to hear the sound. When he was coming out, the people were able also to hear the sound. And so when we expect, when Christ is coming out of the most holy place, when he is starting to come, the bells on the hem of his garment should start sounding to warn the people, this is the time the high priest is leaving the most holy place. And uh, because uh, the Lord is in heaven and we are on earth, we understand the disciples came unto him in Matthew chapter 24 and asked him, tell us what shall be of these things and of your second coming. And then he gave them the events. He gave them the, uh, uh, the things that will be able to happen before Christ comes. And these are the bells of the high priest sounding on the hem of his garment as he prepares uh, to leave the most holy place. And so we should be looking in the book of Matthew chapter 24 so much and you have the book of Zechariah where we are asked to ask for the rain in time of the latter rain. And you have Acts chapter 2. And uh, you have uh, uh, Acts chapter 3 again from verse 19. And then you are having Habakkuk chapter 2 which says that uh, write them plain upon the table so that whoever run it may be able to read it. These are the things that we should be looking into as we speak about the feast of the trumpets and even the trumpets that were to be blown in Zion to prepare a people to stand in the great day of uh, the Lord. We read in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, and it shall be an, a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Verse 29, for, it was, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And so the tenth day of the seventh month, the great day of atonement, the time of the cleansing of the sanctuary, which in the year 1844 fell upon the 22nd of October was regarded as the time of the Lord's coming. Great Controversy 88, edition 399.3. We are told in the typical service, only those who had come before God with confession and repentance and whose sins through the blood of the sin offering were transferred to the sanctuary had a part uh, in the service of the day of atonement. So in the great day of the final atonement, and investigative judgment, the only cases considered are those of the professed people of God. Now, the only thing that brought these people to the sanctuary was the blow of the trumpet, the trumpet blow. And so we, as a people who understand what is happening in the Day of Atonement, and we have so many people in other denominations, we have other people for our household, we have friends who doesn't know what is uh, transpiring in the heavenly sanctuary. 
to us it is given a duty of sounding the trumpet unto them so that they may be gathered about the sanctuary. If we are not doing that and we have received the truth about the day of atonement, then we are not being faithful watchmen upon Zion's wall. Continued on, uh, we read thus, the special light given to John, which was expressed in the seven thunders, was a delineation of events that will transpire under the first and second angels' messages. The first and second angels' messages was to be proclaimed but no further light was to be revealed before these messages had done their specific work. And so before the Lord gives us more light on the Sec, uh, on the third angel's message, we have to be faithful to the first and the second angel's message. Now, the first angel's message um, uh, tells us um, that uh, fear God, give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come. It uh, calls a people, this is uh, a sound that calls a people to uh, prepare and be able to give their lives fully to Christ. On the day of atonement, people had not to do servile work. People had to be gathered around the sanctuary. They had to afflict their souls. They have to offer an offering made by fire. That is a work of purification had to go in their lives. After the first angel's message had done its work, then the second angel's message could be sounded to do the work. And what is the second angel's message? Babylon is fallen, is fallen because she has made the whole world to drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, you cannot talk about Babylon falling when you are not purified, when you have not left its system of finance, when you have not left it is system of health, when you have not left it is system of education, when you have not left it is system of everything, you will not be able to sound the trumpet, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. The reason why our messages have not been powerful, it is because we have been sounding the message and not practicing the message. The only message that has an effect, the only message that has a power accompanying it. Remember, when the soldiers were sent to arrest Christ, they said, we never have had a man speak as he spake, meaning we have never seen a man live the life that he professes. For us, for our second message, Babylon is fallen, is fallen to be powerful. Then we need to come out of this system. Think about this. The first angel's message goes directly to worship God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come. And uh, afflicting our soul, not doing servile work, and um, offering an offering made uh, uh, by fire. And then... In, in, in this hour of uh, the day of atonement sounding the first angel's message, there is a beast that uh, really is uh, shown in Revelation chapter 13. And the beast itself was like unto the mouth of a lion. It had a mouth like of a lion, the feet of a bear, and then the embodiment, the body itself was like of that of a leopard which means that this beast in Revelation chapter 13, which is also the Babylon of um, uh, uh, the woman in Revelation chapter 17, which is actually Babylon of Revelation chapter 18 and all the confederacy, we find that it has three beasts in it. It has Babylon in it, it has Medopasha in it, and it has Greece in it. 
When you go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 12, we are told that uh, the dominion of the first three beasts, that is Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece, were taken away, but their life was continued in the first beast, which is Rome, which is the beast that rises from the sea in Revelation chapter 13. And then if the dominion was taken away of these three beasts and their life continued in the fourth beast, we have to go back and ask, what was the life of Babylon? This is an empire and a beast and a nation which, uh, 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 um, which, um, uh, which worshipped false gods which their worship was directed to various gods and uh, they had different gods in their empire and they watched them. So we must come out of this false worship, false worship of false gods. When you come to the empire and the beasts of uh, the, um, the Medo-Persians, they uh, inherited what we call infallibility. Uh, from Egypt, and uh, they practiced it. Whatever they had written out could not be changed. And you find that many churches are practicing infallibility. That life was continued in the beast of Revelation chapter 13, which rises from the sea. And not only did Rome inherit that, but many churches, whatever they have put in their church manuals, whatever they have put as dogmas in their churches, you cannot go against them. Uh, uh, and uh, if you do that, you will find, you will be censored by these churches. And so you find that uh, not only Rome is practicing infallibility, the life was continued in Rome, but also the other churches uh, have inherited it. When you look at uh, what we call uh, the... The, the, the Medes and the, uh, the, the, the Grecian Empire. But before I go to the Grecian Empire, the Medes also were known for their licentiousness. You can go into the book of Esther and you find that the kings of Persia gathered the other kings to, uh, 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 to drink and celebrate and they were involved in licentious things. So we have infallibility and licentiousness in Medo Persians. Their dominion was taken away by their life Daniel 7, 12 was continued in the fourth beast empire or the fourth beast, which is Rome. Then we have what we call the Grecian empire with their philosophies, with their education, with their zeal and appetite and passion of conquering. The dominion was taken away, but their life was continued in the fourth beast, which is Rome. And not only that, even if you look in... Uh, different churches, different self-supporting ministries, different independent ministries. All you see is supremacy. All you see is higher criticism. All you see is men exalting men and um, esteeming the education of this world more than the education that God has given unto us. There are so much philosophy, whether it be in the scriptures or whether it be in just the regular education that people are having. And so you find that uh, we are living in a time when the first and the second angel's messages should be sounding, but the second angel's message cannot go because we are not giving God glory, for we are still stuck with the life of Babylon, the life of Medo-Persia, and the life of Greece. And so the Lord cannot make us sound the second angel's message, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, because we are not out of Babylon. When you go to Revelation chapter 18, it is the swelling of the second angel's message joining in with the third angel's message, which is the righteousness by faith. And because we have not overcome sin and taken upon the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we cannot sound the message of righteousness by faith or justification by faith because Christ has not been accorded his place in our hearts fully. We are one leg in the world and one leg in the church. And so we cannot even come to Revelation chapter 18 and make a loud cry and tell people, come out of her, my people. Because 
how do you tell a person to come out of a house that is burning while you are still in that house? Where will you be taking that person? In 1 MR 228.1 and 0.2, you are told God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to prepare a people to stand true to him during investigation, investigative judgment. That is why we build our, our, our schools, our hygienic restaurant, our sanitarium, our food factories, and every line of work should be done according to this. But then we say we want to sound a trumpet with a certain note, and then God's purpose in giving the third angel's message, it is for us to build these institutions we don't have them, yet we want to sound the trumpet of the third angel's message. Brothers and sisters, this is self-deception. This is Laodicea. This is becoming foolish virgins at the end of the day. Unless we have these things that have been named in 1MR 228.2, then we are not going to sound the trumpet with a certain sound. So the sooner we come from this self-deception, the better and the, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the the faster the work will go forward. I know that uh, this is a straight talk, but uh, may the Lord give us the strength to take it in. And so um, the special light given to John, which was expressed in the seven thunders, was a delineation of events that will transpire under the first and the second angel's messages. The first and the second angel's messages was to be proclaimed, but no further light was to be revealed before these messages had done their specific work. And let us not think that uh, God will add more light where the old light has been despised. Uh, Testimonies to the Church, um, Volume 6, page 17, Paragraph 4. The three angels of Revelation 14 are in, represented as flying in the midst of heaven, symbolizing the work of those who proclaim the first, second, and third angels' messages. All are linked together. And uh, we are 5T, 520.1. We are in the great day of atonement and the sacred work of Christ for the people of God that is going on at the present time in the heavenly sanctuary should be our constant study. Everyone who teaches the truth by precept and example will give the trumpet a certain sound. Now you see the words in yellow. Everyone who teaches the truth, that is number one, by precept and example. So we are not just to teach the truth by precept we are to treat the truth by example. If you are saying, this is what should be done, can you show the people where you have reached in doing the thing? Don't just tell the people we need sanitariums. You are doing nothing about it. Don't tell the people we need food factories. You are doing nothing. Don't tell the people that we need schools. You are doing nothing yourself. This is preaching the truth by precept and lacking the example. In the book of Timothy, we are told that many are professing godliness, but denying the power therein. To teach the truth without example is to practice, is to profess godliness, denying the power therein. I hope that uh, the Lord will work in our lives. It is your work to proclaim the message of the third angel, to sound the last note of warning to the world. That is the trumpet call. But the trumpet call can only happen if you are teaching the truth by precept and example and not just preaching the truth. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, judgment. And so atonement prepare us for death, judgment vindicates us for eternal life. And then Jeremiah 4, 19, my bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart, my heart maketh a noise in me, I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Now, think about this. In the book, uh, Prophets and King, is that uh, page uh, 84.2? Check, check it if you can in uh, uh, PK 84.2. Um, Prophet St. Kings, I'm trying to remember the page that, um, let me do this, PK. For 
the want of food and clothing. 184.2, not 84.2. Saturn himself brags how this world will be uh, uh, under his control. In uh, Prophets and Kings, page 184.2, we are told thus the world will become mine. I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of contempt. A sign, I'll make the observant of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty, a disloyalty to the authorities of the earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day Sabbath. For fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. Now, we read this issue for fear of wanting food and clothing. Now, brothers and sisters, you see what is transpiring as we speak right now in many nations, that um, the world governments and the powers that be are trying to bring the GMO by force upon the people and loading it over the countries. And in um, some few months, some few years to come, if Christ doesn't come, the whole world for fear of wanting food and clothing will be under the control of the powers that be. Because if they give you a uh, seed, the seed itself is synthetic. It is programmed in a way for it will just work for a season and with their own fertilizers, but after such a season, it will not be able to propagate unless you go to them for the seed and for the fertilizers again. So you will be enslaved in that system of the seed and the fertilizers because you are not a prudent man. You are not a wise man. We see these things happening and Satan himself has said, for the want of food and clothing, he will make sure that the whole world will be under his control and no one will keep the seventh day Sabbath. When people, they can't reproduce or produce anything in their lands, they become villains in their own country. They become dependents. They cannot be self-independent. And we see these things happening. No one is maybe voicing the voice. There are a few voices here and there, but our church needs to stand before its congregation and uh, teach the people how they can be able to do seed selection, how they can be able to preserve the seeds and preserve food and all that and avoid these things that are coming. You say, oh, this is an alarmist or uh, you create fear in the people, no? Satan himself has said that for fear of wanting food, this whole world will be under control. And we do not ask ourselves, how will Satan be able to control the food so that even Seventh-day Adventists do not obey the Sabbath? It is because our lands will be reproducing nothing. We will not be having our own food factories. And that is why we will rely on the world. Now, when we start relying on the world and there's no buying and selling, unless you have the mark of the beast, what do you do then? You starve to death because you are not prepared. But if you are prepared, and we are told if we are having uh, 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 small lands and small kitchen gardens, we will be kings and queens. Right now, we are hearing the message about uh, country living every now and then, country living. But uh, people do not have money to go for country living. And uh, people have only small portions of land to subsist on. Where? is the Seventh-day Adventist church to tell people how to use a very small land to be able to reproduce much without even relying on the government or on the funds or um, on, the, on the fertilizers and the seeds of this world, which actually we are told they propagate so much, but uh, they, are, they are not good for our health. We should be depending on the Lord to give us the wise ways in, in the book of Genesis chapter 25, there was a time of famine and uh, Joseph grew some food and he harvested a bountiful of it while other people were having problems. We never ask, how was it that uh, Joseph um, uh, just planted a little? I mean, that is uh, Isaac, uh, not Joseph. Isaac was able to plant a little and then he was able to harvest a lot 
there is God factor in farming, which we have neglected. And there is the way the Lord will teach us how to use a small place to come up with a lot of food. But um, these lessons, which will be so prominent in the, 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 the Seventh Day Adventist Church to prepare a people for the crisis that is coming of food, they, ne they never had. People go to church, they laugh, and they come out. They say the sermon was so good. You ask what was the sermon all good about? Nothing but laughter and storytelling, and the people are not getting prepared. Thank God for the few who are taking opportunity to be able to teach the people what they should be doing at such a time that we are living in. And we pray that um, the Lord may make us uh, wise virgins and not foolish virgins. Um, uh, the Lord may be able to make us wise and not foolish virgins. And so uh, Jeremiah laments in 1 Corinthians 14, 8, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? This is Paul. Jeremiah had been lamenting about his bowels because he had heard a trumpet, the alarm of war. But Paul now is asking, if we do not sound the trumpet with a certain note, if we continue sounding with a certain note, who shall be able to prepare for the war? As we wrap up this presentation in Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, we have a few slides like five and we are done or seven or so. And as they that uh, bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that were that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Uh, uh, we are told that um, a trumpet was sounded. Um, when uh, Jordan was at its fullest, God moved to demonstrate his redeeming power on behalf of his people, troubling the water uh, is always a precursor for delivering the Red Sea parted. Immediately, the ark stepped by faith in the waters, the waters were parted. And th that ark represents the word of God. Immediately, we move by faith. Every difficult situation that we are facing will be removed. And so we need to teach the lessons of faith to our people. They don't need to wait for a time when they have everything so that they may take a step. You know, the reason why even people have not gone to the country, they have not started practicing education, uh, true education, they have not started sanitarium, and all these things that are mentioned under the third angel's message is because the ark has not stepped in the water by faith. When we step the ark in the water by faith, the Red Sea will part. And this is Righteousness by faith and justification by faith. A message that you never hear almost for a year in the church, and it should be occupying the most part of the pulpit. Uh, Jeremiah's question is this. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, thy, they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? If even we are finding a difficult time living in this time of peace. With all that we have, what shall it be when the Jordan starts swelling? And so um, just looking at the last points, uh, the last points in Joshua chapter 6, verse 13, uh, and the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But uh, the rare, rare word came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. This is what we need. Joshua's march is what we need at this time if we will break the walls of Jericho. This world has become another Jericho so hard to, uh, 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 to break down. But uh, with the trumpets sounding, with the priests sounding the trumpet with a certain note, we shall be able to bring down the walls of Jericho. So Joshua was commanded to march for seven days and blow the trumpets. Every day um, he marched blowing trumpet. Every day he marched Blowing trumpets was an invitation to the inhabitants of Jericho to leave the city and join them in the march. As Rahab was saved, every person in Jericho could have been saved. God is not exclusive in extending his salvation to man. 
Uh, and so in facing our challenges, we too have a Jordan to cross, we too have a Jericho to march around, we too have to face Babylon. We too have to dry up another Euphrates before entering the eternal promised land, we have to be conquerors over the world, the world, the devil, and uh, the flesh. The trumpets are in our hands. We are commissioned to be on the offensive. Advance, the victory is assured. And so Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior, uh, the saver of his knowledge by us in every place. And um, 7 BC 988.2, now the church is militant. Now we are confronted with a world in midnight darkness, darkness, almost wholly given over to idolatry. But the day is coming in which the battle will have been fought, the victory won. Now uh, we cannot um, lead the people to win the victory if we are not sounding the trumpet with a certain sound. Lastly, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquering conquerors through him that loved us. I want to read a verse in uh, Joel and then we pray. I'd like to read a verse in Joel, then uh, we pray. Joel chapter two. This is my final admonition. This is my final request to every one of us, including me. The book of Joel chapter two. Joel chapter 2, just after Hosea, we have Joel chapter 2, and uh, I'll read verses uh, 11, verses 17. This is our final reading. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, that is the trumpet call, for his camp is very great, for he, he is strong, that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? That is the same question in uh, Revelation chapter uh, 6, verse 13. Verse 12, therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Then verse 15, we are told that um, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God. And so let us sound a trumpet. Let us gather the people. Let them tell them, let us tell them that Christ is coming. And as we do that, as we get into the service of God, that is how we are sharpened and we become vessels in the sanctuary that can be used for a holy cause. May the Lord bless us and um, let us um, pray as um, we close. Let us pray as uh, we close. Heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto thee once again. And uh, we cannot give what we have not been given. And so that which you have revealed unto us, it's for us and our children. Help us to disseminate it and not keep it to ourselves. If there be in any way that we have been asleep 
on Zion's wall, Lord, awake us. Do not let us become foolish virgins. And so thank you for thy grace and thank you for accepting us once again. Forgive us our iniquities. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.